artisans, much like a hamster clinging to a tetherball, we are spiraling towards an uncertain and dangerous future. There are too many humans, the oceans are rising, and now suddenly everyone has an insatiable desire to make green smoothies and then shame their friends into making them too. What even is Moringa? Fortunately, there's a solution if we rise to the challenge. If we escalate our efforts. Something to really aspire to. I am, of course, talking about vertical farming. That's when, instead of spreading your food out on the ground, you make it the sky's problem instead. There are numerous benefits to vertical farming. It can be done in very small spaces, allowing for it to take place within cities, which cuts down on transporting costs for the produce. You could even potentially grow vast quantities of kale within your own office building. Now that's what I call locally grown. Because it can be done indoors, it reduces the need for pesticides and reduces the risks and costs from bad weather. Though tornadoes and locust swarms are a lot less severe indoors. It can be done with artificial lighting, which means we don't even have to depend on the sun. In fact, we can make up whatever pattern of light we want in order to maximize plant growth, similar to how we trick flowers into blooming year-round in greenhouses to make sure that they are ready for every holiday and wedding. This means that we can harvest the crops more often. Because of the artificial nature of these farms, we can also more easily control the levels of carbon dioxide and minerals that the plants are exposed to. Interestingly, balancing these environmental controls, such as atmosphere, lighting, and temperature, is being treated as a machine learning problem. That is, artificial intelligence is assisting in producing vertically farmed crops by learning what environmental settings produce the best yields. The computers will soon control our food supply, and I for one welcome our new metallic overlords. Some vertical farms can even use salt water instead of fresh water for irrigation, putting the giant friggin' ocean to work instead of overtaxing our clean drinking water supply. And because the farms are connected to the electric grid, it is relatively easy to power them with renewable energy sources like wind or solar power, compared to the giant farming machines needed for fields that generally use fossil fuels. This is a growing industry, pun very much intended. According to an IEEE Spectrum article, right now, vertical farms are most active in Japan, China, Taiwan, and the United States. But expect more of them to be popping up and up and up all over the world as governments and businesses realize some of these benefits. The big startup in the United States right now is called Plenty, and they claimed in a number of press interviews that they can grow hundreds of types of plants with crop yields 350 times greater than traditional fields, while using just 1% of the amount of water that the field would use. These claims have not been verified by scientists yet, but a multi-million dollar grant from the National Science Foundation is underway, led by Cornell University to evaluate claims such as these. Just how good is vertical farming? In the near future, we will have a lot more statistics on exactly that. But to play devil's advocate for a minute, vertical farming does not work for all crops. At least, not yet. Right now, it is mostly used for lettuce and green leafy vegetables. I hope the workers wear hard hats to protect from falling iceberg headis sleds. It would be an extra challenge to grow something like bananas or corn in a vertical fashion. But who knows? We've tricked plants into growing in crazy ways before, like square watermelons, so I'm sure we could do something like that again, right? It's yet to be seen whether that's possible. But for now, vertical farming doesn't really work for important crops like wheat, so vertical farming isn't going to immediately solve all of our crop issues. But someday soon, we could all be eating strawberries that a computer grew way above our heads. The future is cool. I'll see you next time.